Radio Society uh, about 1987, or primarily because I was interested in, in uh, collecting some radios. The Historical Radio Society, for half of its life, was essentially a floating swap meet. That is to say, <coughs> once every two or three months, we'd get together at a parking lot somewhere. We have the Society of Wireless Pioneers archives, and I'll tell you about that very briefly. The so Society of Wireless Pioneers was established by a guy named Bill Brenneman, who had been a marine operator in 1912. And he wanted to get together with all the old guys. At that point, when he did this, this was going back 50 years, because he did it in the early 60s, and uh, have them tell their stories and send them their photographs and things. So they published a journal called the, Soci the, the Journal of the Society of Wireless Pioneers, and there's marvelous, marvelous stories in there about the early days. And they had uh, all these archives going back to 1912. I mean, they're just stunning from a historical point And uh, we're now taking care of their archives, and we're now trying to figure out the best way to get those stories out again on the web. Now, we also have the, the uh, James Maxwell Historical Communications Research Library and archives. Jim Maxwell, Pacific Director for the ARRL, and uh, was a double PhD scientist, and but he'd been a radio guy from at least the time when he was in the Army doing intercept work in Germany and, and whatnot. Uh, but he, he went out of his way to collect uh, periodicals and that sort of thing. As a result of his work, we have two original number one QST magazines. It's practically just a Most of our guys, they like to collect and fix up old radios. We inherited Russ Dilberg's uh, radio shop. So we got all his equipment, all his tools, all his parts, all that sort of thing. So we're actually in a position, I'll show you some pictures, to do vintage radio repair. We also, we also republish books, like behind the front panel. We operate W6CF, which is Jim Maxwell's We had a uh, radio room recreation at KRE. Some of you may remember um, American Graffiti. So this is a movie in the 60s about these kids in San Rafael just before the Vietnam War and that sort of thing. And, and you rem may remember that the kid has to get a message to his girlfriend because it's, you know, it's a matter of the heart. And he has to go see Wolfman Jack to get Wolfman Jack to do this broadcast because he knows his girlfriend's going to be listening to Wolfman Jack. Now I used to hear Wolfman Jack once in a while too. He's in this control room. Well, they actually filmed that at radio station KRE where we had our museum. So we recreated as well as we could the Wolfman Jack control room that appears in the movie. And we also recreated the front door <laughs> when the kid's knocking on the front door to get into the station. <laughs> so we do a lot of other stuff. Um, you know, we digitize uh, old recordings and put them on the web. Um, primarily at this point, World War II Armed Forces radio recordings, uh, entertainment. We have swap meets and auctions, which I've talked about one coming up. Uh, we do have the museum. Many volunteer opportunities. We have an ongoing radio archaeology project. We do it all, we hope, and, and we want everybody to benefit from it.